Good afternoon, everybody from Iowa. I hope everybody had a great weekend. And I hope the weather was decent for whatever your activities that you had planned, that you got to do. And uh, the next week, um, what I've been looking at coming across to Iowa, we might see some white stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in fact, it's got it listed for every day of the week of next week. Uh, week <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> whatever but um and uh, welcome to my channel please subscribe click the like button I appreciate it so much it's just a great great thing and I want to thank my subscribers that I already have bless your hearts thank you so much okay we got to move a little bit over here here there we go I think I should be all right in a minute Okay, let's start with this one, and this is uh, concerning uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Fuji, and um, it says, time and time again, White House Medical Advisor Anthony Fuji has lied to the United States. Fuji lied about the National Institutes of Health, NIH, not funding again of function research. I had to move my, I have a cross hanging there. Uh, this lie was uh, uh, eventually revealed when the NIH came out later and admitted that it did fund these studies. The medical advisor also admitted to lying about face mask. When COVID-19 first emerged, Fuji said it was ridiculous for anyone to walk around wearing face masks. Though after shifting gears and demanding for Americans to mask up, Fuji said his initial claims about masks were just meant to preserve supplies for health officials. During a recent interview with CNN, Fuji continued his pattern of being manipulative and dishonest, an utter disgrace. While interviewing with CNN this week, Fuji was questioned by the Senate Health Committee in interim report which shows a research related situation most likely triggered the rise of COVID-19. Of course, Fuji gave pushback to this. According to the medical advisor, he skimmed through the report from the Senate Health Committee rather than reading the report in full and deem it to be unfortunate. Fuji later told CNN the other studies and findings from scientists disagree with the report produced by the Senate body. These clear attempts to discredit the committee's findings right hollow in light of Fuji's, uh, Fuji's own pattern of contradicting himself. The medical advisor mentioned of other data doesn't negate any GATE, negate credible views that research incidents the lab leak theory or the coronavirus in lab tampering possibly triggered the pandemic. Negate. I've never heard that word before. N-E-G-A-T-E. -E. Learn something new every day. And you know what my mother used to say, you will to your last breath. Uh, unreliable narrator in, in the best of scenarios. Fuji claims to be taken with no more than a grain of salt. Time and time again, he's proven himself to be unreliable. Just days ago, Fuji sat down with another interview where he admitted the jury is still out. When it comes to booster shots for the COVID-19 vaccine, yet in the same breath, he also claimed there's no reason for anyone not to take these boosters. Mm, I'm not going to voice my opinion on that. So let's go ahead and move this over and let's see here. I've got a whole desktop full again here so I just got to start somewhere. All right let's try this one here. I can't help it I love the news and I'm not an experienced news reporter I'm just a YouTuber. <laughs> you know, but I love the news, good or bad, you know, but I try not to do too much bad. I just don't, uh, I just don't care for it, you know. We have enough bad stuff going on 
in this world. We don't need uh, somebody spewing it all over the internet. Okay, this has got to come in a little bit. Hang on a minute. i got to do some adjusting. There we go. That should be... That should be good. Okay. Um, New York Governor Kathy Hochul, H-O-C-H-U-L, is encouraging parents to put masks on their toddlers once again, this time to protect them from the RSV, respiratory cynical virus. I hope that's cynical. It's S-Y-N-C-Y-T-I-A-L, cynical virus. Cause of RSV and other viruses are rising across the country, and scientists say that the rise is likely because of masking and other restric restrictions. According to Hochul, uh, strapping masks onto the face of children is fine now because they are more socialized to the idea of wearing a mask anyway. Let's talk about exactly what the RSV is. Uh, these are the symptoms. I want parents to be aware of that. Usually fall and winter. It's like a common cold, but it does hit younger children and it's really frightening. The Democrat governor said, it's not new at all, something we have seen before. Just a good old-fashioned cold and probably, you know, good old-fashioned flu. But my change, I change every season. And I've been this way since a child. And uh, uh, my sinuses will act up and I, I'm so tired. And uh, I don't feel good. I don't have no energy. Yeah, but I've been that way since I was a child. Every change of the seasons, I get sick. Infants as young as six months old have been known to contract this. It's hard to keep kids safe. Think about the facts that a year ago before a year ago. Think about the fact that a year ago, before a year ago, a lot of kids were wearing masks in daycare center or in schools and that gave them some level of protection, Husho said. Failing to mention studies that indicate the cloth, surgical masks are not effective at blocking exhaled aerosols. Aerosols. In other words, germs is what I, I am thinking that means, you know, A-E-R-O-S-O-L-S. -S. Yeah, it's not enough for the cloth or the surgical mask. They're not effective enough to block the germs. Um, aerosols, that's it, aerosols. And that could be true, I don't know. I don't know. I got mine from Humana, and that is my uh, one of my medical uh, uh, programs. And uh, I love Humana, but uh, I wear mine when I go out, especially in the wintertime, even when I let the doggies out. Uh, I will put it on just to stand by the door and wait for the dogs. Yes, it does help. So far, I'm all right. <laughs> We're not mandating this, she continued, though she did make it clear that she is strongly recommending parents remask their toddlers. Well, you know, may not be a bad idea just to be on the safe side. You know, what we're, at, what we're saying, parents, you know, other kids, you got kids in school, preschool, got a baby at home, you really might just want to take these extra precautions, Husho said. The Democrat governor went on to claim that children have already gotten used to wearing masks because of the COVID pandemic. So, you know, they should be used to it. It's nothing uh, new to them now you know, and by now kids are more socialized to the idea of wearing a mask. It's not as strange to them as not as if, what is this all about? There's a lot of cute masks out there. I've seen some. They are. In fact, I'm going to get me a couple that I saw. <laughs> I've seen a lot of them. So that's something I'm encouraging all parents to consider for the children right now, uh, Hoshul said. And I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. I just don't know. Uh, what the New York Democrat failed to mention was that there are serious concerns surrounding the effects of masking on children, particularly to toddlers. First, many studies have indicated that the mask 
have had a negative effect on childhood development, especially children's ability to understand and identify emotional cues, C-U-E-S. Now, I don't quite understand that one. First of all, I read, though, here a while back, uh, a child with a mask on, um, something about their speech. They couldn't speak correctly because of the mask. But I'm sure they knew what they were speaking, you know, but maybe the others couldn't understand what they were saying. I don't know. There's always questions about everything. <laughs> you shake your head, have a drink of coffee. <laughs> Second, a more recent revaluation surrounding the immunity gap showed that COVID restrictions, including masking, restricted immune development. I don't know. According to the Daily Wire, the immunity gap essentially happened when restrictions and practices that were common during the pandemic limited the spread of viruses, leading to less people developing immunity to them. Well, I never thought of that. But that COVID-19, can you get immunity to it? I don't know. And I'm not going to remark too much. When people re-entered society, the viruses were back, too. Babies often received antibodies for the RSV through their mother's breast milk. But even the mothers often weren't exposed to RSV during lockdowns. Dr. Buddy Creech, C-R-E-E-C-H, who works in pediatric infectious diseases at the Vanderbilt University Medical Center, has asserted that the COVID restrictions played a role in the increased levels of RSV and other diseases across the country. What we lack is a couple of years of little kids developing the immunity that needed to keep these colds at bay, Creech said. We may be in for a rough six or seven weeks with influenza and the RSV. Uh, cases of RSV are currently 60% higher than the highest week of 2021. Uh, Blaze TV's Sarah Gonzalez discussed Huschel's remarks and the immunity gap on her show, The News and Why It Matters, on Thursday. Well, there is something to uh, look into and to think about, you know, but um, for a child to get immune, um, it doesn't stop them growing up and still getting a cold and the flu or pneumonia. To me, I don't know, you know, but um, that's what the Herschel's is reporting, so... Let it be. That's what I say. Okay, uh, I'm going to go for a while and look up some more stuff on my desktop. I'm loaded. I've got to. I've got to get it cut down. <laughs> I have no room for nothing, and I'm getting ready for tomorrow. Yeah, I am getting ready for tomorrow. Okay, I will be back. Okay, and just remember, you are a blessing to everyone around you. You know, you may have helped them. Somehow, in their sorrow, you may have helped them with a hot meal. You may just went and sat down and had a cup of coffee with them. That is a blessing to someone else. So just remember, you are a blessing. i got to find my camera button here. I'll be back.